Hi there, uh, Pablo here. So in this video, we're going to look at a uh, SD access uh, multi-site uh, and how do we uh, build that up. Okay. So when you're <clears throat> designing your SD access uh, fabrics, uh, there's a number of uh, options that you can take in in, in terms of uh, fabric site uh, prices. Uh, so as you can see there, there's option one, two, three, and four. Uh, so being from uh, a large uh, site uh, towards the smaller uh, side uh, uh, in, in there. So option four being sort of the fabric in a box uh, option with just uh, one device or a stack of devices uh, in, in in that particular side. If we go up uh, the scale, then we may have a, a number of uh, border nodes uh, with uh, either co-located or dedicated uh, control planes as well as edge nodes doing their own uh, functionality with separate control, uh, words and controllers or the words and controller uh, in option four embedded in the switch uh, itself. Okay, so when you're looking at the, 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 your design options as well, you, you're looking at a, a high availability, scales and all that kind of stuff uh, in terms of the, site of the size of the site, but as well, how are you going to interconnect uh, those sites? There's a number of uh, transit, type, transit types that you can choose from. So IP SD access or SD1. So the idea being is that you have an end-to-end -end segmentation uh, strategy across uh, all your, your sites. Okay. So that allows you to perform a um, unified and consistent uh, policy when you look at a, a group-based uh, access uh, policy. So the first thing, the first one is the IP-based. So we've seen in previous videos, uh, how we build that with the layer three handoff. So essentially it's a BGP uh, automation that DNA Center does on the border nodes and then a manual configuration on the Fusion uh, devices. Uh, so that gets carried in a VRF light uh, type of configuration. Then we have the, then we have uh, the SD1 uh, transit. So there's a couple of couple of versions uh, to this. So there's the independent uh, domain, and then there's the integrated uh, domain. So independent domain is where the SD access fabric site, the border nodes are doing its own thing. And you have uh, your SD1 uh, devices doing their, their own thing. So the, the VEHs uh, as they're called on the SD1 side of things. Whereas in the integrated domain, uh, so the border nodes and control planes are doing both functionalities uh, from an SDA and SD1 uh, perspective. I believe right now the recommendation is to go with the independent domain, so we keep things uh, separate when it comes to, to troubleshooting uh, things. Okay, so what, what, what happens is that the end-to-end -end, uh, segmentation and group-based uh, policies can be carried from an SDA access fabric onto the SD1 fabric and back into the SDA uh, fabric. Yeah, so that's uh, how it looks like. It's uh, you're doing a, a, an IP transit towards the SD1 edge, where you carry the, the the VNs into the VPNs in in the SD1 uh, world, and you carry as well the the SDPs. On the SD access uh, transit uh, uh, side of things, then you have your <clears throat> multiple sites. Uh, that are interconnected by some kind of uh, one, like, uh, traditional one, DMVPN, uh, dark fiber, and so on and so forth. And you need to make sure that the MTU is uh, accounted for when you deploy SD ac access uh, transit. Uh, so we're adding a couple of uh, uh, more roles uh, in here. So it's called the TC or transit uh, control play. Uh, so that transit control plane will know prefixes uh, in site 1, site 3, and site uh, n. Uh, so whenever uh, an endpoint in site 1 wants to communicate with an endpoint in site 3, uh, the traffic will be, or the border node, the local control plane will query the transit control plane and will point that uh, uh, those packets to be sent towards the border uh, in site 3. So the border node will send those packets uh, towards the, the border node in, in site tree. So all that, uh, uh, as it travels across this uh, cloud in here, it will be encapsulated with the VXLAN 
uh, on top of that. So you'll be able to carry uh, virtual networks, SUTs, uh, so on and so forth. So it provides that uh, end-to-end -end, uh, segmentation. So as you can see, uh, there comes from list and VXLAN, and the list and VXLAN remains uh, within that one uh, network. Okay, so this is the network diagram and the steps that we're going to follow. So first thing is the transit control plane for SD access uh, transit. And in this case, I'm using a C8AB or a Catalyst 8000V. And so that's deployed in here in the same compute uh, server uh, that is hosting the rest of uh, this uh, services. And it's uh, directly connected to the that fusion device uh, on, uh, acting as a, as a shared services uh, block. Okay, so the transit control plane doesn't have to be in the path of the traffic, uh, so we only need reachability uh, from the border nodes uh, towards the transit control plane uh, and as well from the NA center for management perspective. Okay, so we'll do a uh, discovery of the fabric in a box. Uh, we could provision this as a plug and play with the plug and play, but I've done it manually, so I configure this box uh, manually via the CLI and I made sure that there's a uh, third tree connectivity uh, and reachability from this fabric side towards uh, this uh, fabric side. Okay, so we will discover this CAD device from DNA center. We'll create a, an SD access transit. Uh, we'll enable the fabric rolls uh, to that fabric in a box. Uh, so when enabling, we'll also have to uh, assign IP pools for the wire clients in the corporate network or corporate VN as well as the wireless clients uh, in that corporate uh, VM. So we will only use the uh, corporate uh, access on, on this. Uh, uh, we won't look at the uh, guests uh, for this one. We'll, we'll only be looking at the, the core VM on, on this particular side. Uh, we, oh, also, there's a step uh, somewhere here where we have to create a, a, a site in the network hierarchy where we will be assigning this uh, device to. Okay, once that all that is on, we'll test the endpoint uh, for wired. Then we'll deploy a, an embedded wireless controller on that switch, and we will do a test uh, an endpoint uh, uh, on the wireless uh, side of things, connecting to to the wireless on on that particular uh, side. Okay, so moving along, uh, we can see on DNA Center on their inventory. I have already deployed that uh, CATV. So it's a Cloud Edge uh, Atlas 8000D. So it's deployed in there and it's already discovered uh, in the NA Center. Let's uh, create the uh, network hierarchy for that particular uh, for that site. So Ireland, Dublin, we can add another area. Uh, call it Galway, for example. We expand that, and we have the Galway uh, site. Let's uh, add a building. Uh, one more, I believe it's uh, called the office in Cisco Galway. Uh, let me have a look what the address is, and I'll go back in a second. Okay, so I've taken the <coughs> coordinates of uh, the Cisco building in Galway. So let's add that. So one office in Dublin, one office in Galway. And uh, so our FIA will be in the Galway uh, site. So let's add a floor to that building. Uh, so let's do, uh, or let's uh, stick with the same floor one. And must be in Dublin. Yeah, proceed without an image uh, for now. And that's our, our new, how our new hierarchy uh, will look like. Okay, so let's move on <clears throat> to discovery. Uh, well, actually, let's go on to network settings first, uh, IP address pools. 
so we actually have to reserve a couple of pools for the Oramore site that we just uh, discovered. So the first one will be Corvian Oramore. Set that to generic. Select that from the global uh, pool that I had created in previous videos. So the subnet will be 10.53.19.176. And the gateway will be 177. And the ACP and DNS will be 18.3. Okay, I'll reserve that and I'll also reserve one for the uh, lab APs or the uh, access points. Uh, I'll fill that, that up and, and come back once it's, uh, it's done. Okay, those details are filled up and let's uh, hit reserve. It's okay, so just making sure that <clears throat> we have uh, those IP pools already uh, reserved in there. For a, a later uh, workflow. So now let's go into discovery. So again, uh, we have our fabric in a box. This uh, I have manually configured uh, this uh, field. If I go on to this DLI for that device. And let's uh, exclude unassigned. There's a VLAN 23, an SDI, uh, and there's a trunk going towards the towards the fusion over port uh, 103. There's a trunk allowing that allowing that uh, VLAN uh, 23. So on the other end of the fusion, is exactly the same. And there is uh, what I've done, it's uh, <clears throat> then created a, a static route or a default route pointing to the fusion. And I've also included a couple of static routes towards the border node one and border node two. So those are required for the Lisp control plane uh, routes uh, to show up. So, yes, uh, how, how those uh, IP routes uh, look like. Okay. So IP connectivity is, um, from the theap is, uh, is there. So if we ping on the loopback zero uh, towards the DNA center, there is uh, reachability uh, in there. So that's all we need uh, for now to discover uh, that device. So if we add a new discovery, it'll be theap, IP address, and we'll select our loopback zero. Uh, I think if I scroll up a little bit, it should be there. So this one on loopback zero. Use loopback. Uh, I'm going to untick this one here. So my CLI credentials, this NMP, read and write, and the netconf uh, port 830 uh, is enabled in there. Okay, so let's discover that. It should take a, a, a minute or two to, to come up. I'll post the video until that comes back. Okay, so that's come back with a failed uh, netconf. I think uh, I have to enable that. So netconf yang, netconf yang, and what is it? This is age port eight three zero. And show neck and jang status. So it's enabled. If we do a rediscovery, uh, that should go through. But I could see the DNA center was uh, already logging in as part of the, the discovery process. If I see authorization failed, so we'll have a look at what that is. So uh, it's in progress. We completed that netconf has uh, failed. Uh, let's have a look actually on eyes. If I refresh that uh, the network 
devices the uh, page and eyes there's no uh, fiat in there uh, as of yet i think uh, that's all we have to do with the AAA configuration so Uh, let me try to figure it out, and uh, I'll come back in a second. Okay, so I just had a, a issued this command, the AAA authorization exec default local. And it seems that uh, netconf requires uh, the use of the default group in order to successfully authenticate. So you see that passing uh, as a green check in there. So DNS enter will now we should have already added it into the inventory. So if we filter this to go away, for example, show me all the devices uh, in go away. Uh, actually, uh, it's not going to show up because I haven't assigned a site to it. Uh, so that's the fiat right there. Uh, so it hasn't been assigned to, to a site. So it's in fully managed state. So we can go ahead and provision uh, that device. So let's uh, choose a site now. So we will put it in the floor one. In order more. No advanced uh, configuration, no templates. And that's the summary configuration that is going to go in there. So then center will configure the AAA settings, DHCP, Etc. Etc. So let's uh, deploy that. As part of the provisioning, the DNS Center will also create an entry in the network devices in ICE. So you have to make sure <clears throat> that we update the, the device type uh, here in ICE. If I refresh there, okay, so I see the VF coming up in there. I just have to edit this device type to switches because otherwise it is not going to hit the correct uh, TACAX rule and the any center will fail to authenticate into that device. Okay, so I'm filtering now to go away. So I see that device uh, showing up in there. On the CLI then I, I see <clears throat> the any center uh, successfully uh, authenticating and, and authorizing. Let's wait a few minutes uh, until that moves onto a managed state and I'll come back. Okay, so that has gone into managed state. So our device is already in inventory and provisioned uh, by DNA Center. So we can go move, move on to the fabric uh, configuration. Uh, so first thing, let's uh, configure a transit uh, network. So let's go back here. So we will use a transit and SD access uh, transit. Uh, for that, we'll need the transit control plane, which is a uh, CAKD. Uh, so, this will be uh, what is going to be configured as the transit control plane for an SD access uh, transit. So, let's create a transit. And in this case, we're using a uh, list pops up. Uh, and we select that uh, and what site uh, the transit control plane is uh, located it's in the cons room uh, and it's the tcp for transit control plane uh, actually let's give it a name sd access transit let's configure that so that's our transit uh, creator in there let's go to fabric site and we'll have to create a, a, another fabric site. So our fabric site will be in the Oran Moore uh, building. So here I'm going to select the Oran Moore site. Uh, so just make sure that you're selecting the same site for building as you reserved your IP pools. Okay, so next, next in here, will be close authentication for 802.1x. 
Uh, we're not going to do fabric zones. And let's deploy that. Okay. So, actually, when we go back to inventory, just want to check something quick. No, the fiab. Let's make it a quarter node. So let's go back to our fabric site. There's our fabric site in there, or a more. We have our FIA in there. Uh, before we do anything to the FIA, let's. What we're going to do first is uh, go to this point, our main site. Just make sure that we add the SD access uh, transit to our control plane. So add a transit, and that's our SD access, SD access uh, transit in there. We need to make sure that this site provides uh, internet access to other sites uh, through SD access. So what will happen is, uh, for this use case, for example, is uh, all, all other sites, or this one in particular, will head back to the main site and speed out the traffic to internet or share services, uh, for example. So if you need to backhaul all traffic back, uh, you have to make sure that you select uh, that in there. So that's a uh, border one. Do the same for border two. And deploy that. Okay, so that's uh, going to update in the background there. Now we can go back to <clears throat> our new site or more. And we'll do the configuration for uh, this fabric in a box. So it's going to enable edge, control plane, pop up, and border node. And set it to uh, the AS number. <clears throat> And add the SD access uh, transit. Hit that on check. Add. Add. And deploy. That uh, has gone for deployment to the Fiat. I look at the CNI for the field. The DNA center has been uh, busy there uh, doing it, uh, its thing. Oh, there's some configuration happening there. There's some list uh, configuration that has gone uh, in there. We also see that uh, actually uh, there's no VRF uh, deployed uh, so far. Uh, so let's do that in host onboarding. So it's close authentication, virtual networks. Let's add one or two. So corp and infra. Let's apply that. So for our infra VN, which is the access points. I do the infra VN or more and actually just leverage the same ice rules that we have configured for the main site. Let's just make sure that we're using the same uh, naming convention. So I will take a quick screenshot of this. So it's the infra VN capitals. And then corp lowercase. So let's go back to one more. Also boring virtual networks. 
and in our infravian so the AP AP pool and the VLAN name would be infravian We'll do the similar thing for Corp. Once that uh, finish in there. Okay, so that has gone through uh, for Corp. So our Corpian with a name Corp. Traffic data. Going to be used as a wireless pool as well, and we'll add that. Okay, apply, and that should be going on to our field. You see, VLAN 1021 has been created, the core BRF has been created. Lisp instance ID will be Lisp instance ID will be forty ninety nine, which is the one that it's using for the right route distinguisher, and it's assigned to VLAN ten twenty two. Let's show around VLAN ten twenty two. Uh, not the VLAN, but the interface. That's assigned to the BRF of uh, Corp. Okay. I think we should be good to go to uh, test with our wire endpoint. So we'll enable the fabric rolls to the FIAB and SD access transit to both the disk borders and to the FIAB uh, border node uh, as well. So if I bring one of the clients, <clears throat> so this client has a, a neck onto fabric edge uh, number one, which would be this one, and it has a neck on this uh, fabric in a box as well. So going to simulate the uh, entire endpoint connected to the the FIA uh, device. Let me just uh, bring the FIA line there. Enable that port. Let's set up as a DHCP. Right, so we receive that an IP address from the DHCP uh, server. Let's see from the FIA show application sessions. That's it. GI or TW one that's zero. Okay, so that's our device in there, or our user, and our IP address of uh, nineteen uh, one seventy eight. Let's go to some of the other uh, FEs. See if I can track down uh, another user in Corp. And let's try to fix. Okay, so this one. This guy is in Corp. A CT value of 18. Which is a user in finance. And if we go back to the via then. So, what was the IP of that user? 1053192205. Okay. 
I should be able to ping that. Yeah, so those would be a, would be a user and the corporate VM on the main site. Uh, and we have reachability from the user and on the FIAB on the same uh, VM. So what's happening there is that the user traffic is coming in here, gets encapsulated into the VM uh, corp. Uh, there's not a route for that particular subnet in here, so it's going to query the transit control plane. Let's see if I change this to a pen. It's going to query the transit control plane. The transit control plane will reply back and say, uh, go to any of these uh, two borders. So it will send the traffic out the interface, onto the fusion, and down to the border. And this border will have uh, this or this, will have a route to that subnet. Uh, and this control plane functionality within these two borders will have this particular R block or router locator where that other client uh, is. So it will send the traffic, in this case, in Fabric Edge 1, we we'll send it here. And this Fabric Edge uh, by the regular switching. Uh, Procedures uh, will search for search for the MAC address of that device and send it out to the particular port where that other uh, user is sitting. Okay, so we've gone all the way down to uh, this stage. Uh, so next uh, step would be then deploy the EWC uh, controller on the field uh, to enable wireless uh, on that particular site. So let's uh, erase uh, all this and go back to our laser point pointer. So for that, I'm going to use uh, a jump box uh, in here where I have, let me see if that jump box is uh, working or not. This, I have downloaded the image for the iOS XP Wireless controller uh, for 17.6.3. Uh, so I'm going to import that into the MSN. Let me log in and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm logged in in there. I can flip it down to show me only devices in the GoPro site, which is the FIA. But actually, I'm sitting in the wrong place. So let's go to fabric sites. One more. And let's go to our PF device. And we'll enable the embedded words uh, line controller. So it's telling me that uh, there's an image uh, necessary for this, which uh, we're going to select uh, from here. So iOS XP and 17.6.4. It has to be the same image as the iOS XP that is uh, on the device. So this V app is running 17.6.4, therefore the embedded wireless controller is on 17.6.4. Okay, so we're going to activate that image after importing. Okay, so let's take a, a couple of minutes because. Uh, uh, about, uh, what is it, 1 gig, 600 megs. Uh, so that's going to go through the flash of the device. The NSF will push that, and we'll see the, the next steps. So I'll go back where, once uh, it's been pushed. So you can see it's uh, been imported uh, successfully. So now it's uh, going through the image uh, activation. Okay, we'll give it a few more minutes. Okay, so image uh, has been activated uh, successfully. Now we can move to uh, the manage uh, scope. Uh, so let's select the or more and floor one as the primary. Okay, what is profile? Uh, so let's uh, Actually, go to design network profiles. And I'm actually realizing that I canceled out of that. So, we 
I have to check if we can go back to, to it uh, at a later stage. So say I give it a minute until that finishes up there and we'll come back. See that page has loaded up in there. Uh, I will also add these two sites to the, uh, under the wireless profile. And let's see, fingers crossed, we can go back to the previous stage that we were in. So let's enable this. Uh, it would probably be a case of uh, doing that again. So we'll have to wait. Well, me, because that will post and you, you, you'll see it back uh, once it's done. Okay, so, uh, it seems like it's uh, detected that the image has been imported already. Uh, so maybe just a case of uh, deactivation. So let's give it a minute or two and I'll, I'll go back. Okay, it's made it through once again. So let's uh, hope that we are in good shape now. So manuscope, so building and the floor. And let's leave that unchecked. Let's go into provision this summary. Uh, so all these SSID components are going to be uh, pulled from the network profile we just uh, assigned. So going to add that and let's hit uh, deploy now. While we wait for that to be done, I believe in the field. There is an access point uh, plugged in. And let's see if that has authenticated successfully. Let's, uh, authentication interface. Authentication sessions. So let's uh, shut down that port. Let's force um, uh, re authentication. We will open a new console. I believe it's uh, 4800 2. Yeah, okay, so that uh, access point is uh, loading up in there. So we'll leave it uh, for a minute or two once uh, that completes. Uh, let's go back to our. See, we were in, in here, so I don't think we need the jump box uh, anymore. So jump back to the browser on my local host. So what we need to do now, so the EWC in the Western control has been enabled. So what we can do then is go to host onboarding wireless SSID uh, and let's uh, assign the corp. I haven't created, or if you remember, we haven't reserved any IP pools for guests SSIDs, so I'm not going to uh, select them here. Uh, although, uh, and I'm selecting a corp uh, pool for the corp SSID, so that should be advertised in that particular site. So that should be enabled in there. And we will have to wait for the access point to come back. So if the access point is shown as reachable at the moment, but it's uh, rebooting, so it may take uh, a minute or two for the center to mark it as unreachable. 
So if we go back here, the access point is uh, putting up in there. So let's uh, give it a minute or two until it finishes and I'll come back. Okay, let's come back, but I think there's something wrong with uh, my authentication. So we can look at that uh, later on. And what I will do now is assign this access point or provision. And we will assign it to floor one in one more. Let's go for typical. And apply now. So that access point should again reboot. And when it come back, comes back, uh, it should be pointing. The DNA center should be uh, pointing that access point towards the Wilson controller in that side, which is the embedded uh, Wilson controller in this VM. Okay. So that should uh, be rebooting in a, in a second and we'll come back. What we, what we may do is uh, just have a quick look at the water sun controller. Look at that uh, water sun controller. That water sun controller should be Uh, accessible. Uh, let me see. So let me try to figure out which uh, credentials I'm using for this. Okay. So logging in now. So there's the GUI for the switch itself. So if we go here to configurations and wireless, for example, waterland, we see the corporate SSID has been enabled because we had assigned an IP pool to it. We didn't assign an IP pool to guest, so it's going to remain uh, disabled uh, in there. Uh, Let's see if we can monitor AP uh, statistics. Uh, so we don't see any APs uh, coming up yet. Okay. Uh, I may have to have a look at the authentication for that device or for that uh, access point. Uh, in ice and, and I'll come back in a second. Okay, I get it now. So for some reason, uh, for some reason, DNA Center didn't configure that interface uh, appropriately. So obviously, it's uh, not going to authenticate. Uh, let's see if we can force that. Now we go to that to the fiat. Uh, actually, host onboarding for assignment. Let's um, filter by link status. Uh, let's assign what we'll do. Let's do a, a static assignment. And let's uh, deploy that. Let's see if uh, okay, the any center has uh, figured that. So let's see what happens if we. and clear the assignment. Let's 
by the toy dot. I think let's see if I, it returns it to its uh, to how it should be. Let's uh, hold on for a second. Okay, configuration is synchronized. All right, so it seems like uh, it's returned it to sort of the, the ideal configuration, or maybe not. And the port assignment updated successfully. All right, here we are. Oh. That's what I was uh, looking for. So do show. For some reason, DNA Center didn't configure that port. But okay, so it's running. Dot uh, one X. After that expires, it should go into map, and we should see then the access point uh, application coming up in here. So failed. What map map should have gone through? So there we go. So map lab APs, infra VN, and got an IP. Okay, so 1019.170, which uh, correlates with VLAN 1022, I think. So we should know. Actually, not that one, 1021. Yeah, it wants to find. And we've got an IP address, IP address of uh, 170 via DHCP. Okay, so ideally, then on our person controller, which is in the switch, let's refresh that. It's not coming up yet. And it's trying to reach out to the previous what is the LAN controller whereas it should be going to 6319.164 may have to force that uh, somehow I will pause the video and I will come back okay so I logged in to the what is the controller in the main side so it seems like a the access point is trying to attach uh, to it. So let's go here to advance and let's clear all the config in there. Let's uh, go with OK. Should uh, disappear from the RE800 uh, DL and we should be seeing it coming onto the 9300 uh, switch in here but only once uh, that access point uh, reboots let's uh, give it a minute or two until that reboots and i will come back and uh, just while we wait so there's a uh, client here that i'm going to use to, for testing so wi-fi is enabled but there's no ssid uh, being advertised so the other access points The other access points that are supposed to be in the main site, they have them uh, shut down at the moment. Uh, so they're all in the in the same rack. Uh, so these other two are shut down. So whenever we see the SSID coming up, will be the SSID from the CF. Uh, so we'll make sure that we connect to that SSID on that access point rather than rather than connecting to the other uh, access points. Okay. So I believe that um, access point will have to download the new image because I think this 
this ID is on different image than what the controller currently is. So 1763, but the embedded Wordstar controller is on 1764. We will see that in here. So that we have on seventeen six four the switch itself as well as the embedded one sign controller. So if it's uh, got an IP address. So for some reason, we got a response from the 164, which is the one that we're expecting. But somehow it's sending as well a request to the previous Watersound controller for some reason. OK, I think uh, my option 43 or the and the DNS uh, was pointing towards the previous uh, or the other Wordstone controller. So I have fixed that in the Windows Server. And it seems now the access point is going to the correct uh, Wordstone controller. So if I go here, uh, yeah, let's uh, maybe wait for for a minute or two before that comes up or, or actually we may have to provision uh, that access point uh, once more because we had that I had clean, cleared the configuration and I had deleted it from the inventory in the any center so let's wait until that comes back actually I see the it downloaded the, the new image from 1663 to 1664 uh, so that should take a couple of minutes and, and once it comes back, I'll, I'll return. I'll post the video for now. Okay, so that has uh, rebooted uh, in there. So it's uh, joined uh, the controller, it seems. So let's go back to here. So let's uh, refresh that. See that access point uh, showing up in there. So to configuration and access point. So just to reiterate, this is the 9300 uh, switch. We see our access point there in registry. Okay. So ideally now, if we go to our endpoint, and let's see if I find the tab for our endpoint. And here it is. Should ideally see uh, the SFID being broadcasted in theory. Uh, let's have a look here. More sounds. Okay, Corp SFID. Uh, I think we may may need to do a provision of uh, that access point. So let's uh, provision. Ah. Uh, let's wait until that becomes uh, reachable uh, again. So I'll, I'll pause and I'll come back once uh, it becomes uh, reachable. Okay, that didn't take long to become uh, reachable. It's because you're probably doing some configuration in there. So let's uh, provision that. So typical, and let's uh, deploy that. Let's actually cancel out of that for a second. Uh, let's 
see if we can change uh, the name of this access points. And what access point are we in here? So AP 48802. AP 4800-2. Uh, what we may do is uh, do a uh, rethink of this. This way, take the, the new name on that access point. I'll be back once the that switch, the fiat goes into managed state from syncing. So that's uh, now in managed state. Uh, this one hasn't changed uh, its name, but okay, let's uh, let's just go ahead with the provisioning. And let's uh, deploy that. has been marked as a success uh, provision. It may take a while for that device name to to update to what's on the version controller. It's something there. So yeah, it's they're probably going to reset that uh, device. As we see there. Once it comes back, I will uh, unpause the video. Well, unpause uh, seems like a, it has uh, rejoined the controller. And that request uh, to join. We need to find the RF uh, profile uh, to it. So I see it coming up again on the Watson controller and the switch. So ideally, this time around, we should be seeing, yeah, that corp SSID coming up in there. And that uh, device has automatically uh, connected to it. So as a config, just getting an IP address, uh, 1033.19.179. If I wanted to browse on that endpoint, I should be able to as well. I think uh, that should be going out to internet. Uh, yeah, it will in a second. And there we go. We have connectivity uh, from that device uh, onward. All right, so just to recap. So we've done the provision in the fabric in a, in a box uh, uh, device on a separate site. Enable the SD access uh, transit. Uh, and enable uh, the virtual network for both wired and wireless uh, devices on the corporate uh, VM. So we tested the uh, connectivity uh, between the two sites and as well towards the internet. So that's the end of uh, the video. Uh, I believe this will be the last video of this uh, software defined access uh, uh, series. I may add uh, another video in the future, but uh, not so sure uh, at the moment. Uh, so I hope uh, you have enjoyed the, the series uh, and this uh, video in particular. So if, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out uh, directly uh, to myself. All right. See you. Goodbye.